Hello fellow Jerry cans. Sorry I was gone for a while, but now I'm back to my duty to criticize the stupid cartoon animal collecting franchise. So were you expecting an in-depth review of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet DLC, Teal Mask, and Indigo Disc? Well, I originally was planning to review those as a video, but... Eh. The thing is, I don't have much to say about Pokemon Scarlet and Violet DLC. I can just summarize it as, it's just more of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Except for Teal Mask, it's Pokemon SV but set in Royal Japan for some reason. And for Indigo Disc, it's Pokemon SV but with Unova references and double battles, so it's difficult as crap. It's a skill issue. All the strengths and weaknesses of Pokemon SV are there. The exploration and catching isn't too bad. There are some real fun new quirky characters with peak character design. You have been replaced. Excellent music. <laughs> and acceptable enough decent story. But in a technical sense, the game is still a disaster with terrible graphics and eye-raping visuals. What is this, Discord light mode? My eye! Anyways, that's really all I have to say about Teal Mask and Indigo Disc. Basically, it's just more of Pokemon Scott and Invalid. If you enjoyed Paldea, you'll enjoy the DLC. If you hated the main game, you'll hate this DLC too. It doesn't fix anything. So, instead of talking about the DLC, I had another idea. Look, we're coming to an end of an era. It's going to be the end of the Nintendo Switch life cycle soon. 2023 is probably going to be the last full year of the Nintendo Switch as the main Nintendo console, as I find it highly likely there will be a Mew console in 2024 with the Mew Super Nintendo Switch Boy to XL Entertainment System 64 or whatever. Because of that, I expect Pokemon Scott Eye to be the final mainline Pokemon game on Switch. Maybe I'm wrong and we'll get to Gen 5 Remake next year on Switch, who knows, but I personally find that unlikely. After all, I think there's enough fucking Pokemon games on Switch and many will agree with me on that. Not counting remasters, other video game series had like 2 or 3 mainline games on the Switch, while Pokemon had 4, 5, do you count DLC as half a game then 7? Technically it's 11 if you count split versions. There's too many of them! With all these goddamn Pokemon games, I think it would be a good idea to look back at this era of the Pokemon franchise. Look, Pokemon has sold a lot on the Switch, it's still a strong selling series. But no one can deny that the series have been on a turbulent streak of late. Too many games, all the games are half-baked unfinished, the toxic fandom is out of control, and the general public image of Pokemon's quality is dropping through the floor. Remember how with the Super Mario series, the 3DS and Wii U era was considered the dark age of Mario because of all the uncreative, uninspired new Super Mario Bros games? I think in a few years, we will look back at the Switch era of Pokemon as the dark age of Pokemon. The era where Pokemon games sucked. If the series improves like I hope that is. If Pokemon gets worse somehow. Yeah, Switch will become another underrated era like the shitstorm that was Generation 7 or something. So for this video, I just want to go step by step of the Switch era of Pokemon and just go through in chronological order what Game Freak and Pokemon Company did wrong. What led to Pokemon becoming a buggy, incomplete, mediocre series on the Switch when other Nintendo franchises like Mario, Zelda, Fire Emblem, Metroid, Kirby reached their serious peaks arguably on the same console. It's rewind time! To the time it's rewind time was a meme. That's already five years ago? What the fuck? Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee is an okay game. It actually adds some character to the Kanto region. There's some cute story moments, and somehow it's still the most polished looking and stable Switch Pokemon game. The writing Pokemon gimmick is awesome and hell. Some parts of the game are actually done better than fucking Pokemon Far Red and Leaf Green. However, it's a game no one asked for. No one was asking for another Kanto remake, especially when the last two games were filled to the brim with lazy Kanto nostalgia baiting. No one wanted a game that was teetering on the line of spin-off material. No one wanted a Pokemon game with half the features like abilities missing with casual motion controls. This game purely existed only for business, not for an artistic vision. Pokemon Company noticed that a lot of normie people that don't normally play video games play Pokemon Go on their mobile phones, and some suits said, hey, let's make a crossover between Pokemon Go and the mainline games so we can get normies to try and get into the mainline series. So was born the bastard child between Pokemon Go and Pokemon Yellow version, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. This was meant to be purely baby's first Pokemon game, 
and it clearly shows. What's crazy is that this game came out pretty late on the Switch because the system was nearing its second birthday. Also our good old goblin, Snekatsu Ishihara mentioned in her interview that he thought the Switch would be a failure. Moreover, the game almost feels like it was made for the 3DS and converted to Switch last minute. Like the overall feels like something out of Pokemon Sun and Moon, upscaled into HD. Junichi Masuda did mention the game was in development since 2016 when the 3DS was the main console. So this is my personal speculation, but I feel like the game was going to be made for the 3DS because Pokemon Company didn't have faith on the Switch. But since the Switch was a success commercially and critically, maybe they switched plans last minute and made the stupid 3DS game a Switch game. That might explain why they started this generation of a baby search Pokemon game that was cheap to make, and the next fucking project was put into production last minute, leading to a rushed dumpster fire. That is of course... I remember a time when Pokemon fans' biggest whines about the series were minuscule complaints like, oh, Unova has ugly ice cream Pokemon or something. I feel like the fans began to lose goodwill for Game Freak starting in the 30s era with the Battle Frontier missing in Oras. Where is it? Where the hell is it? And the rushed nature of Generation 7. But I think the final straw that broke the camel's back was Pokemon Sword and Shield's disastrous launch. Pokemon Sword and Shield was unveiled on a Nintendo Direct in February 2019. Side note, remember when Pokemon wasn't fucking Directs, not Pokemon Presents. Anyways, the trailer looked okay and most weren't angry at the game or something. But in E3 2019 the same year, in an infamous Nintendo Treehouse livestream, this bombshell dropped. And so what that means for Pokemon Sword and Shield is that players will be able to transfer their Pokemon from Pokemon Home only if they appear in the Galar region Pokedex. Mass Thus, outrage controversy was born, especially on internet platforms like Reddit, Twitter, and YouTube. Fights between the Pokemon fandom between fans who defended the National Dex Cut decision and fans who were completely outraged by the muse, Yuta's algorithm giving more and more of a voice to toxic YouTubers criticizing the developers, leading to more toxicity in the fandom, fan movement and signings, cause that always works. What also did not help was Junichi Masuda and Shigeru Mori's terrible interviews. Look, I'm sure Masuda and Omori are nice people, but these guys are buffoons at public relations. Masuda said bullshit quotes like, we're taking away the national deck so we can focus on higher quality animation. And the game looks like fucking this. I'll try spinning, that's a good trick. And Omori ambiguously saying, we redid all the character models, also did not help. Liar! I personally still hate the national deck cut decision, but whether you agree or disagree with me is a whole nother topic of a video. What's a shame is that even if I did not care about the national decks, Pokemon Sword and Shield could have been a good game. But it wasn't. Out of the mainline original dual release games, this is the worst Pokemon game to me. Like everything just feels soulless. The game's art style just looks meh, the graphics are terrible, the map design is laughably linear so that it feels like you're on a conveyor belt, the story is terrible and the characters are forgettable, there's too many laughably animated shitty cutscenes, new gimmicks like Gigantamax and Wild Areas is also horrendous, and the game was just really, really boring. Pokemon Sword and Shield is one of those few cases where I'm just perplexed on how it sold so much to the mass audience. Like, is the Pokemon brand just that strong? Pokemon basically became the Michael Bay Transformers movies at this point. Fuck quality, everyone ate this shit up for some reason. What's stupider is they had a chance to fix the game with a third version like they usually do, but for the first time, Pokemon decided to switch to releasing DLCs instead of third games. No Pokemon Gun, just some DLC about random side story stuff that has nothing to do with the main Galar storyline. Nothing that fixes the main game's problems, it's just content I didn't give a shit about. I don't know, I never finished the Sword and Shield DLC, maybe it's good, but Sword and Shield was stupendously horrible. I didn't want to play that game ever again. In retrospect, if this game got more time to oven, it would have been so much better. Instead of a 2019 release, a 2020 release. Instead of half the team working on the Pokemon Go crowd bait, all hands on deck on Sword and Shield, the real flagship Pokemon games. That would have made the game better. But nope, Pokemon Company got greedy, and they were lazy, rushing and cutting corners. At least the game birthed my catchphrase. To many, Pokemon Sword Issue was a slap to the face, and I personally know some people who quit being Pokemon fans after the Galar games. Still, there was one thing that could make any diehard Pokemon fan come back to this series, and that is of course, Sinnoh remakes. They couldn't make it worse, right?
I'm going to say it. Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl is the worst game I've ever finished in my life. There's probably worse video games I've played, but out of the finished ones, it's the worst game I've ever played. I mean, do I have to explain why this game sucks? Just look at it. It looks horrible. The art style is just embarrassingly ugly. It's misguided faithfulness to a horrible source of material game is just stupid because a superior version of that game exists and it chooses to completely ignore said superior version, while at the same time not being faithful by adding stuff no one asked for like the forest EXP share. What's so sad is that on paper this game was a neat idea. Ever since Genesis 6, it felt like Game Freak was having trouble scheduling out games and games being left half done, so getting some other developer to make the remake so they can focus on something else should have been a good idea. But nope, instead Pokemon getting a well-established game studio like Monolith Soft or Bandai Namco to make it, they got some small developer company who's so unknown that they still don't have their Wikipedia page. These guys over BDSP have never made a game on their own before. They were a quote unquote support company that helped other bigger studios make games or do porting stuff. This is my very personal but logical speculation but Pokemon company probably hired these guys because A, they made Pokemon home so they're familiar with Pokemon and B, they could hire them for cheap. Again, it's not about art, it's about the money. Now, you don't need a big budget or a large number of people to make a good game. After all, the next game LCA made, One Piece Odyssey, got a good reception. No no no, despite them being unknown or less experienced, the people at LCA aren't really at fault here, because someone at Pokemon Company told these guys to make these remakes faithful. Pokemon BDSP has made the word faithful become almost an absurd F-word slur to me. I get chills when I hear the word even when it means good. Every Pokemon remakes before BDSP weren't faithful to the source material. They were mute Pokemon games that included aspects of the original games, but changed things that didn't work or expanded on ideas to make it a brand new game. LC was probably planning that too, based on these concept sketches they drew. This is the Cinder remix they imagined, and this is what we ended up with. We got no cool Mew reimagining of Sinnoh locations or characters. We got Cyrus or any of the characters doing nothing Mew. You got Giratina sitting on its ass in a cave, no distortion world. I could go on and on, but I feel like repeating myself too much. I already did an hour long rant on the game in the past. What I will say is that this game killed a lot of people who grew up with the Sinnoh games interest in the franchise and it's a shame too. This is a true story by the way, like I had a friend who never touched gaming after the DS as a kid and he said he was willing to buy the Switch if the Sinnoh remakes came out on the Switch. Suffice to say, he never bought the system. Many often call Legends Arceus the best Pokemon game on Switch. Even people who hate Pokemon after everything that's happened say Legends Arceus was okay. Well, Contrarian Jerry can here with the favorite take of saying... I disagree. It's my belief that people who like this game are Pokemon fans who only play Pokemon games and never actually play the non-Pokemon game, especially action-adventure games. Pokemon Legends Arceus is just a tech demo, not a full complete game. A tech demo of real-time Pokemon catching? with the entire money and effort going into it. No interesting world exploration at all, because everything is an open field of nothing with random Pokemon just wandering around. Other sandbox adventure games include fun puzzle solving, dungeon clearing, side quests that aren't fetch quests, fun mini games, collectibles to collect, and interesting narrative to follow. Lens Arceus either have none of these or they're embarrassingly primitive. The only interesting aspect of this game is the catching mechanic and the setting. Everything is hollow. The story is horrible and I don't even remember it, the characters are forgettable, the side quests are all fetch quests, and all of them are horribly done with laughably terrible animation. I still can't believe the main hub town, Juve's Life Village, is a barren ghost town. Every NPC just stands around like zombies, not a single one moves in this village without even an idle animation. The children just sit around. And you call this a good game? Oh, but Giratina showed up at the end with the origin form in a cool fight with Cynthia's ancestor as the twist villain. I clapped, I clapped when I saw it. Pokemon fans might be the most impressionable fans on the planet. Oh my god, something that I recognized from my childhood. Gulp shit to origin form showed up. This was bare minimum Game Freak could have done and people were blown away by it. Basically sums up Pokemon in the game. Bare minimum and people think it's the second coming of Arceus.
Anyways, this game fucking sucks. I never want to play another experiment again. I'd rather play a real game. I'm so pissed they went with this route. Instead of getting someone else to do a cheap remake and making some experiment shit, why not just make a classic Pokemon remake with the Sinnoh region in the style of Oras or Heart Gold and Soul Silver? I feel like either Pokemon Company or Game Freak's overambition backfired here. Game Freak should have stuck to their speciality, making 2D style turn based RPG with simple story and characters. They saw the success of Breath of the Wild and Link's Awakening on Switch and wanted to make two ripoffs alongside it, and both were crap. I wanted a real game. They could have made a real game. Instead, on top of getting someone else to make a cheap remake, Game Freak chose to make two incomplete games at the same time. Because literally a month after this game came out, the next game, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet was revealed. Literally a month later. We literally got three Pokemon games in the duration of one year span. Don't ask questions. Just consume product and then get excited for next product. In interviews, the developers admitted Scott and Violet was developed alongside Legends Arceus. I'll say it, Pokemon Scott and Violet and Pokemon Legends Arceus should have been one game. Combine the open sandbox real-time catching element of Legends Arceus and the open-world storytelling structure of Scott and Violet and boom, you get an actual complete Pokemon game. But they didn't do that. Pokemon Company is on the delusion that they have to start a new generation every three years. Why? Why the fuck does these games coexist? Before you answer it, the question is rhetorical and I know the answer. Read. What we ended up with is one empty beta test for a game concept and one game that runs like crap and buggy as hell. What's shameful is that Pokemon Scott and Violet, I enjoyed a lot. It's the most fun I've had with a Pokemon game since Pokemon Sun and Moon. Like the story was actually pretty good, Paldea has one of the best cast of characters in the series, the game's art style, when it's working, I did like. New gimmicks like Terrestrialization and Paradox Pokemon were also really fun. Hell, Spurgatito is one of my favorite Pokemon of all time now. The problem is, it's the Pokemon game that gave Pokemon the image of a buggy franchise. Except for BDSP, which wasn't made by Game Freak and the early Game Boy days, Pokemon games weren't considered buggy. Pokemon games were sometimes rushed and incomplete, but they never felt buggy. Scott and Avalet made the bar lower by making bugs and unstable gameplay the norm for Pokemon. Does Game Freak really want to benchmark Todd Howard and Bethesda Studios? Again, if Scott and Avalet didn't come out in 2022 when there was already a Pokemon game release, or Lens Arceus didn't exist and Game Freak could focus only on the Paldia games, or Game Freak just combined Lens Arceus and Scott and Avalet into one game, an open world history game with gyms and Pokemon League. One generation on a console is enough, especially when video games are costing more money and time to make. We're not on the DS and 3DS anymore. Pokemon isn't some handheld simple game series now. Pokemon is currently on the same level of expectations as other AAA games on the Switch. I think I'm repeating this phrase for the 50th time, but it's a damn shame, because the devs at Game Freak I think had a nice vision for Paldea. This is a clip from some spin-off music material that featured the game's story with Paldea and its characters. This is I think what the devs were trying to make. A colorful, beautiful open world Pokemon game, set in a romanticized version of Spain, Portugal with interesting characters and a deep story. But instead of this, the actual reality of the game is this. Could they have tried making one good game, as opposed to two horrible games? Quality over quantity. That's our lesson here. This might be the saltiest thing I'll ever say on this channel, so be prepared. We can't just talk about the games on Switch, because we have to look at the big picture. And that is how the Pokemon franchise has changed during the Switch era. It also explains why Pokemon has dropped the ball with quality control in the mainline series. I mentioned this briefly in my How Pokemon Has Become a Corporate Brand video, but the Switch era of Pokemon will also be remembered as the age when the franchise changed. The fundamental business model of Pokemon has changed. Talking about Pokemon spin-offs is the easiest way to show how Pokemon has changed. Pokemon has stopped trying to make quality spin-offs with actual games. With the exception of Pokemon Snap and the Mystery Dungeon remake, it is not a Pokemon spin-off game I would call a real game. Like we got the mobile Pokemon Gacha game for lifeless weaves, some cafe minigame for those grandmas who love Animal Crossing, League of Legends ripoff for the Chinese audience partnered with Tencent, more shitty Detective Pikachu game so there is more source material for a Ryan Reynolds starring feature movie. 
I blame Pokemon Go's success for Pokemon doing all these games. It seems like Pokemon Company is trying to turn Pokemon into something more than a children franchise on Nintendo consoles. Pokemon Switzerland will be remembered as the time it lost its most loyal fans, but will also be remembered as the time Pokemon went mainstream. The time Pokemon went from an otaku video game series kids played on their toy consoles to a brand where they can get big name celebrities like Post Malone and Ed Sheeran to sing songs for them. Pokemon trying to become a brand and more than just a Nintendo game franchise is shown with those Pokemon Presents videos. Don't believe me? This is the biggest indicator. Back in the past, Pokemon games were featured on Nintendo Directs or Pokemon Directs. But nowadays, they've rebranded live presentations to Pokemon Presents so they can talk about non-Nintendo related mobile game shit no Nintendo gamer would care about for half the duration of these videos. I would like to share a revelation I realized after 2019. It seems like the sole reason why the mainline Pokemon games exist right now is just so that there can be a Mew region every 3 years. A Mew region with Mew Pokemon and characters that Pokemon Company can sell products on. From simple merchandise from plushies to digital gacha and Tencent gaming, Pokemon has really devolved from a Nintendo game franchise to a brand. Now I must make it very clear. I'm not against merchandising. All my other favorite media franchises are very into merchandising. Hell, Pokemon has always been into merchandising ever since its conception. Pokemon started as a fanatic fad of toys and merchandise in 90s Pokemania. I love Pokemon products and plus she's just like any person. But Pokemon's current merchandising annoys me these days because the merchandise in Pokemon no longer feels like the byproduct of the games. It feels like the mainline Pokemon games just exist to make more merchandise and make money off spin-offs. Like Generation 1 to 6, I didn't mind the merchandise because the games were okay to good. But now? Who cares if the mainline games are buggy, rushed, or mediocre? As long as it serves its purpose to make new regions, characters, and Pokemon to sell, the game quality does not matter at all. That's also why they have the money to hire Post Malone and Ed Sheeran to market the game, but no time and money to hire actual voice actors for these games. Pokemon products can be shown to the normies who like these singers, but there's not enough money and time to invest in quality control of the main games. That's also why even though there was already a Switch Pokemon game in 2022, they had to make another mainline game so there could be a new generation every 3 years. Jesus Christ, the release window of these games are so fast, the manga writers can't keep up. <laughs> To show what kind of madness this business model is, let's insert the current Pokemon business model to another video game series. Let's say Mr. King of Video Games Mario. Imagine if Nintendo rushed out Mario games half complete every year so they can sell more Mario merchandise. Imagine Super Mario Bros. Wonder, an excellent video game with zero bugs, runs like butter, one of the best Mario games I've ever played. Let's imagine Super Mario Bros. Wonder being rushed by the higher-ups so they can release it in time for the Chris Pratt Mario movie, or they release the games just so Nintendo has an excuse to build the Super Nintendo World section in Universal. Would that be acceptable to you? The reason why I love Mario expanding merchandise out of the mainline games is because Mario hasn't forgotten the mainline series. There's still quality control and Switch has many great Mario games on it. On the other hand, Pokemon? There aren't any. In my personal humble opinion, the reason why Pokemon kept its popularity going even after the end of 90s Pokemania was the existence of quality games. Other monster collecting franchises like Digimon, Yu-Gi-Oh, Yokai Watch never really caught on and faded into obscurity because they didn't have mega hit games like Pokemon did. Kids played these games on their Game Boy Advance and DS growing up, becoming lifelong Pokemon fans. This has now changed. Pokemon has now become too mainstream, and even though the games still sell well, the main series has lost its way and dropped the ball with quality. If this continues, who knows what will happen to the next generation of Pokemon when good games no longer exist, younger kids are more interested in something like Fortnite, and all we have is low quality gacha games and toys. In the long run, Pokemon is incurring a great loss by pursuing a small profit. Despite everything I said, despite everything I said about the developers' incompetence, the company's greed, the game's mediocreness, I still see the Nintendo Switch era of Pokemon as an era of missed opportunities and very frustrating. You see, Pokemon is not bad enough to be unplayable. All these games except BDSP aren't Super Mario 64 or Balan Wonderworld or the recent Golem game bad. They're just very mediocre when they could have been so much more, and that's why they're so frustrating. 
Like, I think the people at Game Freak have a clear vision of what they want to achieve when making a Pokemon game. I can tell they're still trying to keep children and fans pleased. How? Well, everything that has nothing to do with the technicality of the game, such as the quality of the 2D art like character design and concept art, the music especially, does not match the quality of the game itself. What I'm saying is, I think Game Freak always had good ingredients to cook up a burger, I mean a good game. But because of the rushed production order by the higher ups at Pokemon Company to follow an impossible schedule, the result is a series of unwarranted, mediocre, buggy, and just not fun games. So I want to end the video by saying we're at the crossroads. For the next era of Pokemon games, what will happen? Will Game Freaks improve with their mainline games? Well, I don't see the Pokemon company changing their greedy business model anytime soon, but that doesn't mean they have to make bad games. They can just hire more people and put in more effort, who knows. And I'll admit there was some improvement. Pokemon SV was much better than Sword and Shield, except for the bugs. I'm an optimist. I do still think Pokemon can improve, but I can be proven wrong. Pokemon could go the other way. Since the company's is on the basis of it will sell anyways mindset and all the Switch Pokemon games sold very well, maybe this shitstorm will continue. Generation 10 will be another buggy mess, and the Nova remix will ruin the childhood of many man children across the world. The choice is yours, Game Freak and Pokemon Company. I leave it entirely in your hands. God, I always want to end a video with a DC reference. Oh, and people might be curious about my ranking of all Switch Pokemon games. From bottom to top, it goes from BDSP, Sword and Shield, Legends Arceus, Let's Go Games, and Scott and Violet. All our favorite games, though.